All right, the next one is basically all the attributes of quadratic functions. Remember, quadratic functions are shaped in the form of a parabola, which is kind of like a U or a V. It's curved. It has a minimum or a maximum. In this case, we have a bottom point, so that's a minimum. And parabolas go on forever. It's just that this one does not have arrows, but they go on forever. So here we have x squared minus 2x minus 3. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have it graphed. Now we need the domain. The domain is your x values. Since this goes on forever to both sides, your x values are actually everything. So when it's everything, the answer is all real numbers. And here, my range is from bottom to top. The lowest point is here at negative 4. It's a little blurry, but there you go. Negative 4. So it goes from negative 4, it's the y values, the, domain, the range. So it keeps going on forever and ever and ever. So it's all real numbers greater than or equal to, because that's a solid line, negative 4. So it's all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 4. The way we would write it in inequality would be y is greater than or equal to negative 4. That's the way you would write it as an inequality. Now this one has a low point so it has a minimum. What is the minimum or the maximum value of the function g? So what is the minimum value? Value is your y not your x. So my minimum is my y, which is negative 4. That's my minimum value, not 1. 1 is right here, but that does not mean that's your minimum value for x. Your minimum value is your y, which is negative 4. What's my vertex? My vertex is 1, negative 4. My point, this is your vertex. 1, negative 4. My axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry is the line that cuts it in half. So it would cut it in half this way. Vertical is up, down. Vertical is up, down. It's x equals x equals 1. And it plus, it's the first part of the vertex, remember? So it's x equals 1. The y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? Here's my y-axis. Where does the graph cross the y-axis? Right there, which is at negative 3. But it's a point. So would it be negative 3, 0, or 0, negative 3? Well, your y is at the end, so it's 0, negative 3. Now we're looking at what is g of negative 2 equal to? This is the same as g of x, so it's taking place of the x. So we go to the x being negative 2. So we go to the graph. We go to the x-axis at negative 2, which is right here. Where is my graph? It's way up here. And it crosses right there, which is number 5. That's my value. What is the positive value of x when y equals 5? So we go to the y being 5. So y equals 5, which is right here, which we already circled, y equals 5. They want the positive x value. Here I have a negative 2. Here would be the positive x value, which is 4. 
What is the positive x value when y is 5? It's 4. What is one solution when g of x equals 0? Here it's not saying that x is equal to 0. It is saying we're looking for the x, but it's saying that the y is equal to 0. Because remember, f of x is the same as y, g of x is the same as y. So this is saying y is equal to 0, and we're trying to find the x. So let's go ahead and go to y equals 0. Here's my y. Here's 0. Where's the graph at? Well, right here and right here because that's where y is equal to 0. That value is negative 1. This value is positive 3. So it's negative 1 and positive 3. And it's asking for one solution. Well, I found two. Negative 1 and positive 3. Which are, by the way, when it says one solution, remember solution is the same thing as x-intercept, roots, zeros, solutions, they're all the same. Here it is. Zero, solutions, roots, x-intercepts, if there are any, what are they? Well, we found them. It's negative 1 and 3. Well, what's the coordinate for negative 1? It's negative 1, 0, because that's your x, x goes first. And this one is 3, 0. And that's it for that problem. We're going to do two more.